Good day, everybody. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor, Department Chair. We have completely removed this heart from this cadaver, and I'm going to demonstrate the coronary circulation. So let's start from this orifice that we see here. This is the aortic orifice. This is the aortic vestibule, and inside, after removing the blood clots, we can see these are the three cusps of the semilunar valves. So therefore, it has got a right cusp, a left cusp, and a posterior cusp. Corresponding to the attachment of the cusp, there is a small dilatation of the aortic wall. And that dilatation of the aortic wall, if you see very closely, is called the aortic sinus. And emerging from the aortic sinus is a small opening. And that opening is referred to as the ostium. So from the right aortic sinus, we have the right coronary ostium. And that gives origin to the right coronary artery, which we can see here. From the left aortic sinus, we have another opening where my instrument has gone in, this is the left coronary ostium. And from that, we have the left coronary artery coming out. So that is the origin of the coronary arteries. And the coronary arteries, they get filled during diastolic filling. That is just a point of functional and a physiological importance. Now let's take a look at the full course of the right coronary artery, and then we shall mention the branches and the full distribution. The right coronary artery, initially it runs in the right anterior atrioventricular groove or the right anterior coronary groove. It is partially hidden under the right auricle for a short distance and then it comes. This was all covered by fat which we have removed and then it goes to the back. Now it is in the posterior coronary groove and here it is known as RPCA, right posterior coronary artery. Then when it reaches the crux of the heart, the crux of the heart is the junction between the posterior interventricular groove and the posterior coronary groove. When it reaches the crux of the heart, it makes an almost 90 degrees bend. And then, now it is known as the posterior descending artery. And here it terminates in the posterior interventricular groove without anastomosing with the anterior interventricular artery, which I shall mention a little later. If you take a close look, you find that the posterior descending artery is quite tortuous here. This tortuosity is a feature of the main coronary arteries because the heart is in constant motion. And this tortuosity compensates for the mobility of the heart. So this is the full course of the coronary artery. The main coronary artery, right posterior coronary artery and the posterior descending artery. Now let's take a look at the branches. We can see it gives a branch to the right atrium and we can see that here. This is the anterior branch of the right atrium, and in 60% of the population, the right atrial branch gives a branch to the sinoatrial node, that is the SA nodal branch. We also see it is giving multiple branches to the right ventricle, and we can see them all the way here. This is one branch, this is another branch. This branch that we see here, the one which is running the longest distance, this is the right marginal artery. This runs along the right margin of the heart, and it continues onto the inferior margin of the heart. So this is the one which supplies the right ventricle. This is the right ventricle. When I turn the heart, now we are in the right posterior coronary artery. Again, we can see it is giving branches to the right atrium, and it gives branches to the diaphragmatic or the inferior surface of the heart, which is formed mostly by the left ventricle. We notice these are the branches. I'm going to lift up, and we can see this branch, this branch, these are all branches of the right posterior coronary artery to the left ventricle. And the posterior descending artery, which runs in the posterior interventricular groove, this supplies the posterior one-third of the interventricular septum. It also supplies the atrioventricular bundle of his deep inside. That branch, we can see carefully, is going inside. So this is the full supply of the right coronary artery. In this particular instance, I have lifted up the right posterior coronary artery to see the full extent of the branches on the diaphragmatic or the inferior surface of the heart. This is the right coronary angiogram to show the distribution of the right coronary artery. This particular cadaver, it looks like during life, had sustained a diaphragmatic or inferior wall ischemia. And that's why if you notice this portion of the diaphragmatic surface, the appearance and the texture and the feel is considerably different. This appears to be fibrosed. So I would say that this area had undergone infarction, necrosis, and it has been replaced by fibrous tissue. That's why the appearance is also quite different. And neither was it covered by the usual fatty layer that we can see here. So this is the right coronary artery. Now I'm going to shift again back, and I'm turning the heart. 
This is the left coronary artery that I have lifted up here. And we can see it clearly here. This is coming from the left coronary ostium. The left coronary artery also initially, it runs in the anterior part of the left atrioventricular or the coronary groove. And here also it is partially under cover of the left auricle. And immediately thereafter, it divides into two main branches and we can see the two main branches. This is one branch and this is another branch. This is the circumflex artery and this is the left anterior descending artery, also known as the anterior interventricular artery. So let's take the LAD first, left anterior descending artery. The anterior descending artery runs in the anterior interventricular groove and like I mentioned earlier, we can see that it is tortuous. It goes all the way across the apex and it goes a little bit onto the posterior interventricular groove and we can see that here. But it does not anastomose with the posterior descending artery. That's an important point to remember. As it descends down, it gives septal branches which supply anterior two-thirds of the interventricular septum. It also gives branches to the atrioventricular bundle of his, just like the posterior descending artery. And more important, it gives these following branches. We can see one here, we can see one here. These are known as diagonal arteries, or the D1, D2, there can be D3. This also supplies the left ventricle. So the left anterior descending artery is a major supplier of the left ventricle and a little bit of the right ventricle. Then we have the circumflex artery. The circumflex artery, it runs around and goes to the posterior coronary groove on the left side. That is why it is called circumflex artery. This is the circumflex artery. And as it goes around, you can see it is giving this branch here. This is referred to as the obtuse marginal or the left marginal artery. There can be more than one, in which case we call them obtuse marginal one, obtuse marginal two. Here we can see only obtuse marginal one. And then the circumflex artery continues and it goes to the posterior coronary groove and we can see it is now giving multiple branches to the left ventricle. And it is disappearing. The circumflex artery also supplies the atrioventricular bundle of his. 80% of the population, the AV node is supplied by the right coronary artery. In 20% of the population, the AV node is supplied by the left coronary artery. This is the coronary angiogram to show the left main coronary artery and the LAD at the beginning of the circumflex. And this is the digital subtraction angiogram also to show the left coronary artery. Circumflex is shown in by arrow and the LAD. So these are the main branches that we can see supplying the heart. Again to repeat, right coronary artery, left main coronary artery, left anterior descending circumflex. Let's quickly mention the incidence of coronary occlusion. The LAD is the most common site of coronary occlusion, left anterior descending. The second most common site is the right coronary artery. The third most common site is the circumflex artery. The fourth most common site is the left main coronary artery. This is the left main coronary artery. The fifth most common site, for that I'll turn the heart, the fifth most common site is the posterior descending artery. And the sixth most common site is the right posterior coronary artery. So these are the frequencies of occlusion of the coronary vessels by atherosclerosis.